Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're back in the shop. Thanks for stopping by. Mitch behind the camera, a videographer extraordinaire. We're making a gravel fork today because I had a, extra parts. I sold the mountain bike and I had parts left over. I sold the frame and fork. So here's the wheel. It's 650B and the first thing you need when you're building a fork is to do a frame, a fork drawing. So here's my fork drawing. And you need to know the size of the tire. So that's what I did. I took a piece of cardboard. When you fold it and you take a pair of scissors, you need to match it. So you can see that's the first step like that. And the fold line is the center. So it goes onto the, onto the drawing. You line up the fold with a center line and you trace it. And then you know where you want the blade to be. So I've got uh, a blade here. I think it came from Nova Cycles. They're not in business anymore. And so my fork jig, this is my fork jig and this is the fixture for mitering the blades. This, this fork over here is, is one, oh, the bike's gone. On the Romax, which I built, we also did a video on the fork. And so you can check that out if you need to. So you can see here, this is a round. It's an inch round and that's what the fixture fits. And you can see that this is offset when it got mitered because the straight line through the center of the head tube it kicks out because you want the rake or the offset of the fork. So this is, uh, this is basically what we used to make in a way. This is an El Cheapo fork. Can you see how this is in line? There's no offset here on the miter. And that's how we used to buy the blades. They were, they were pre-mitered. We just put them in a jig and braised them up. So for this one here, this is my fixture. See how the holes are round? This is really ovalized here. So that's not gonna work. And this is a one-off. I'm never gonna have another set of blades like this probably. So what I'm gonna do is to hacksaw and I'm gonna hand file. I've never hand filed a Unicrown fork before. It sounds like a lot of work and it probably is, but we're gonna find out. So one of the first things I'm going to do is to mitre the ends in the mill with a three quarter inch hole saw because that's going to hold these inserts that go on the bottom. When we used to make, make, blade, make forks, this is how the jig worked. Got held in here like that and then it would get brazed up or, or welded. So this spacing is 100 millimeters. On the wheel that I have now, it's 110. And we've got these inserts. I'll call these inserts. It's not a dropout, really. So what I did was I made up this insert out of aluminum that fits onto here. And then I can put this on like that on each side. So the new spacing from side to side is 110 millimeters, which is, which matches, matches the hub. Here's, here's the steer tube. This little piece that locks it down, it's spring loaded, see that? So you don't need a wrench to hold it. This is the crown race. I move it up and down to where I want. And then I, I made a little, little pinch lug because the side that goes onto here this one has the thread, so it centers and locks. This one here is a little loose, so there's gonna be a pinch lug. So that's gonna be one of the first things we do is to braise the pinch lug on, and then we're gonna slot it. Because if you wait until it's on the, to the fork blade, it gets hard to hold in the mill. So that's basically what I wanted to show you. And this is the fixture for the disc brake mount and I'm making inserts because the axle is smaller than the one that was there. So let's continue. We're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit of brazing first and then we're gonna miter. So there's a few things going on. So 
16th inch nickel silver. I've fluxed it all up. Flux is coming through the torch. So we'll get a nice flame here and uh, see what we can do. This is a little Im impromptu fixture. So that it just, it stops the pinch lug from falling down, moving. It's only needed just to get a tack on there. There we go. Okay, that looks smooth to me. I've got the fork blade on the drawing. I'm, I'm matching it up and then I'm gonna, <clears throat> with my red Sharpie, I'm gonna make a line here where the insert is. We'll call it the insert. It's not a drop. Well, it could be a dropout, I guess. So I've made my line. So we're gonna set this up in the mill. Because this is at a, at a taper, I've got this fixture here. This goes into the, into the vise. This gets used on the, on the chain stays often. And you adjust the angle so that this angle is the same as this. So it holds it really well, even though this is a taper. And then we're gonna make some kind of a, a stop here at this end so that each of them, when they're mitered, they're each exactly the same length. That's what you want. You don't want one a millimeter longer or something like that. So, what we have to do is to figure out the angle here. I'm going to draw a line which is, is, is parallel with a center line because this is going to have to, it's not going to sit like that. It's going to go down a little bit like that so that we get the angle of the miter at the right angle. We'll call it 77. Can you see how it's a little bit of an angle? See this? It's not perfectly flat. It comes down a little bit. So that fits like that. It's got to hang out a little bit there. So let's say I go right there. So at the end of this fixture here, that's how much space I need. I think I'm just going to eyeball it. So let's, let's go to the mill and let's see how the setup's doing there. I'm moving the screw so that this doesn't hold as much. I want it to hold along most of the length, but when I wiggle it, it needs to hold up here more. There we go. See that? See how it, it it pivots from up here, whereas I can still feel a bit of friction down here, so that's good. So what I'm going to do now is to put this like that. It's not not super accurate, but I'll get a I'll get some kind of a reading and then if I put the miter against this and I look and see where we are, it's gonna tell me something. That looks good to me. Can you see how this is lining up with those felt pen marks? Okay, so I've got a little bit more to come off and then we'll do the second side. And then we're uh, we're basically rolling. Okay.
I don't know if you can see very much in here. Let me see. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Uh, looks like the nickel cell was pretty smooth. So we'll draw a center line here, more or less. So we're gonna put a nice little slot there. There we go, that's what it looks like. It's a nice little slot, it's very clean. Just needs a little bit of a deburr. Okay, let's go look at the blades now because I gotta start hacksawing and filing. So you see here, I've got the, I've got the angle set. It's right on the side of the steer tube. Basically on the center line because this is the same size as the steer tube, so it's going to come right around. So that's my that's my hacksaw line there. So that's the first one, and we'll do the second one. It's going to be interesting to see how accurate my miters are with a file. Okay, so this is what's going on, like that. This goes like that. So this comes up a little bit. So that's what I have to do. I'm gonna start, start the process of filing and it goes down, that's where, see my red felt pen mark? That's where the mitre goes to. That lets me know that I've got the same space on both of them, so. I'll start filing. So I'm, I'm way off the angle here. See, see how much of a gap? On the back here, it, it's touching. There, it's touching. Look at the angle. I'm way off on my angle. So, so it's a back and forth. I file, I check. I'm gonna put a red felt pen mark on this part of the miter because I don't wanna touch that at all. So I, I know the angle, so that's the angle, so I'm gonna go up a little bit. That's my new, that's my angle of filing right now. Can you see how there's a little bit of a gap there? No, a lot less than there was. And this side is touching. I got the blades all filed up. Mitch gave me a little break, so these are all mitered. I think they turned out well. I used a half round bastard file, coarse. It's pretty sharp, so it cut quite nicely. Okay, so, well, I'm gonna use a bit of masking tape and uh, we'll see how we do. Just for the TIG tacking, that's, that's all this is for, just to hold it. This is what happens when you improvise and you have a jig that is helping you, but it doesn't do the whole job. So we are improvising here. There we go. I'm 
gonna put the axle in here. That'll help to make it a little stronger down here. It won't move as much. And then I'm gonna fillet braze this. I have a nickel silver rod, a 16th inch. I'm gonna go around and then I'll grab the 330 seconds bare bronze rod and we'll finish up the fillet. So this is stage one, nickel silver. It flows a little, it flows nicely. It's a strong rod, it's just what I do. You don't have to use nickel silver, but I have for quite a while and it works, it works for me. So a little bit of preheat as usual. So this is a gravel bike that I'm building. This is the fork for the gravel bike. What is a gravel bike? It's kind of a new category that they invented because they needed something else to sell in the mountain bike world or the cycling world. And for me, a gravel bike is a lot like a mountain bike out of the 80s. Sometimes they don't even have front suspension. So it's kind of a simple bike and the tires are usually the largest I'm told is about a 50 millimeter. That's what I'm gonna run. And it's the rage right now. There's a race down in the US. It's called the something 200. And you get riders coming over from Europe. It's a big deal. And it's a 200 mile race, very popular. And seven out of the top 10 this year were over from Europe. So they're, they're fast. On my gravel bike, I'm gonna run flat bars. A lot of the gravel bikes have a road style handlebar, a drop bar. But I'm a fan of flat bars, I guess, because I mountain bike for years in the 80s and that's just what suits me. And Looking at some, at some YouTube videos, it seems like other people are also using flat bars on the gravel bike. So maybe it's a bit of a trend, I don't know. Okay, we're gonna grab the bare bronze brazing rod next. And that is the basics of a fork, a, a gravel fork in, in my case here. And I wanted you to see how the fixture got modified and how I improvise and things like that because when you're building frames or forks and something is custom or a little bit different or new, a prototype, sometimes you have to fool around a little bit. So I hope you like that. Thanks for watching. We, uh, if you haven't subscribed, it would be great if you hit the button. We have merchandise, we have shirts, mugs, things like that. Mitch and I also like coffee. If you buy us a few coffees, that would be most appreciated. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.